uh, hello and good morning dear students uh, today we are taking derivation of kepler's first law of planetary motion so i already uh, told you kepler's first law of planetary motion what is the statement uh, recall that statement every planet moves around sun in elliptical orbit with sun situated at one of the foci of the ellipse so that is uh, kepler's first law now here we have to deduce that kepler's first law as i told you earlier kepler's laws are derived by using uh, kepler give his laws based on experimental observations now here we are we are going to derive those laws on the basis of newton's laws of motion okay so first of all kepler's first law of motion for that we know that uh, every planet moves around sun and force between them is gravitational force so force which is given as which is central force which is minus k divided by r square so this is the force now Uh, we can use substitution u as one over r. Then force becomes, which is function of one over u. Here force is function of r. Here it will become minus k into u square. Okay. Now uh, in our previous uh, lecture we have derived differential equation of motion. We are going to use that differential equation of motion. So from differential equation of motion what is that d2 u by d theta square plus u is minus minus m divided by l square u square f of 1 over u okay now in this equation put f of 1 over u we will get what we will get d2 u by d theta square plus u is equal to minus m divided by l square u square instead of f of 1 over u we can substitute minus k into u square now this u square will cancel with this u square this minus sign will become plus sign so mk divided by l square so here on the right hand side we have mk divided by l square if you take this mk by l square on the left hand side so that will become zero now this is the differential equation for planetary motions now in this differential equation u is the variable which is given as 1 over r r is the distance between sun and that planet now again if we put to get solution of this differential equation y as u minus mk divided by l square then if you put y is equal to u minus mk divided by l square in this equation for that we have to put second order derivative of u with respect to theta so then derivative of y with respect to theta is we have to take derivative of u with respect to theta and m is constant k is constant and l is function of theta dot so that's why mk upon l square derivative of this term with respect to theta becomes zero so dy by d theta is du by d theta again if we differentiate again with respect to theta so that will become second order derivative so that is nothing but d2 by d theta square so we can put this in above equation what we will get we will get d2y by d theta square plus y is equal to 0 okay now call this as equation number 1 so solution of differential equation 1 which is linear homogeneous ordinary simple harmonic differential equation okay so 
for any simple harmonic differential equation solution is oscillatory so we can take solution as y is equal to a which is constant into cos theta minus theta zero so theta minus theta zero is the phase and theta zero here is initial phase a is constant and y is the solution so using y now this is the solution of this differential equation okay if you take second order derivative of y with respect to theta and add this two in y you will get zero okay now using value of y which is y which is u minus mk upon l square so u minus mk upon l square is a cos theta minus theta zero so u is equal to mk divided by l square into a cos theta minus theta zero and u is nothing but one over r okay so this is the equation number two now we have to convert equation number two into known forms what are those known forms we know that equation for conic sections uh, you must have studied equation for conic section in uh, 12th stand, uh, standard uh, mathematics book conic sections are what hyperbola parabola ellipse circle all those are conic sections and all those have different equations and those are the part of conic sections so equation of conic section is l upon r is 1 plus e cos theta where l is semi lattice rectum r is distance e is eccentricity and theta is that angle okay so we have to convert this equation into this form for that if we take mk upon l square as common from both this by choosing theta 0 is equal to 0 if we choose initial phase as 0 then our equation becomes 1 upon r is cos of theta instead of theta 0 okay now in this equation if we take mk upon l square common so here we get 1 plus here l square a divided by mk if you multiply mk upon l square to this term you will get only a into cos theta so this is our equation 1 upon r is equal to if you take this term on the left hand side so that term becomes l square divided by mk r is equal to 1 plus l square a upon mk into cos theta now compare with equation for conic section what is that equation l upon r is equal to 1 plus e cos theta we get l which is semi lattice rectum as l square divided by mk okay and eccentricity e as eccentricity e as if we compare to this equation we will get l square a divided by mk so call this as equation number three so semi lattice rectum l depends upon l capital l square capital l is what capital L is angular momentum which is constant for planetary motion m is the reduced mass here for sun and planet that reduced mass is for that sun and given planet k is what force constant here eccentricity e depends upon l square divided by mk into a now a is constant here we know that different orbit of conic, se uh, conic sections depends on value of eccentricity for example if e is equal to 0 then that conic section is circle 
so for that we must need this value of a so a is what constant so we have to find out that constant so to find out this constant we are using the fact that uh, here from equation 2 here if we choose value of cos theta as minimum and value of cos theta to maximum we will get two solution of this one upon r equation okay so from equation 2 can write from equation 2 we can write in equation 2 Value of cos theta lies between minus one and plus one. That you know that minimum value of cos theta is minus one and maximum value of cos theta is plus one. So for theta is equal to zero, value is maximum, and for theta is equal to uh, pi, the value is minus one. So if you take value of theta anything, so value of cos theta always lies be between minus one and plus one. so we are choosing those values in equation 2 we will get two roots of equation first one is 1 upon r1 so for 1 upon r1 we are choosing value of theta as minus 1 so first root is mk upon l square and here we get minus a so cos theta as minus 1 and another root 1 upon r2 which is mk divided by l square plus a here we are choosing value of cos theta as plus 1 okay so call this as equation number this is equation 3 call this as equation number 4 now to get r1 and r2 in terms of energy we are using fact that at turning points we know that at turning points r dot is equal to 0 uh, what is turning point i already told you at turning points e is equal to v prime that we have shown in a previous lectures video i shown you what are the turning points so for elliptical orbit there are two turning points for hyperbola there is only one turning point okay for circle there is no any turning point so for e is equal to v prime in this case and v prime is what v plus l square divided by twice m r square so these equations we have derived now here if force is minus k upon r square then v is minus k upon r this is also we derived in previous lecture remember force is negative gradient of potential so force is equal to what minus dv upon dr if you take this dr on the le left hand side and negative sign and integrate this equation so integration of f which is minus k upon r square into integration of dv is v and integration of this term is minus k upon r okay now then 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 we can say e is equal to v dash okay which is v plus l square uh, divided by twice mr square okay now this is v and v is what minus k upon r plus l square divided by twice mr square and this is constant now if you take this energy on left hand side so in this equation if you take this energy on left hand side so that will become minus e and on the here we will end up with zero okay if you take this energy on this right hand side 
our equation becomes L square divided by twice M into R square minus K upon R minus E is equal to 0. And this is nothing but quadratic equation in 1 upon R square. See. Here minus k upon r square can be written as k into 1 upon r. So this equation is like this ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0. But instead of x here we have 1 upon r square. Okay. See a is coefficient of this which is l square divided by twice m. b is coefficient of this which is minus k and c is minus e which is constant. Okay. So energy is constant. Now, solution of this quadratic equation, solution is what? <laughs> solution of quadratic equation is, see, x which is 1 upon r is equal to minus b and minus b is what? k plus minus square root of b square which is k square minus 4 into ac. Now 4 multiply by a which is l square divided by twice m into c which is minus e. So that's why this minus minus becomes plus divided by 2a 2 times l square divided by twice m. So this 2 2 will get cancelled okay and 1 over r is equal to this mk divided by l square plus minus this will go to this so m divided by l square and sorry if you take from this equation if you take k square common from this two term and take this k square out of this square root so here you will end up with mk and in square root of if you take k square common and out, outside the square root that will become k so here you will have 1 plus this 4 this 2 okay 2 times e l square divided by we have taken k square common so in the denominator we have mk square okay so 1 over r is this now there are two roots in this equation First one is 1 over R1 which is mk divided by L square plus mk divided by L square into 1 plus 2e L square upon mk square and another root is 1 over R2 which is mk upon L square minus mk upon L square into square root of 1 plus twice L square upon mk square. Now, call this as equation number 5. If we compare equation 5 with equation 4, we will get, see, 1 over R1, mk upon L square, okay, plus instead of A, we have this term. And in this equation, mk upon L square and instead of minus A, we have this term. So, comparing equation 4 and 5, Comparing equation 4 and 5, we will get value of A as mk upon L square into square root of 1 plus twice L square upon mk square. Okay. Now, use this value in equation 3. we get value of eccentricity E as see, semi stress rectum is L square upon MK and eccentricity E is L square divided by MK into A. So we have to multiply this A by L square upon MK. If you multiply L square upon MK, so this term will become 1. So eccentricity is square root of 1 plus twice E L square divided by mk square 
so this is the value of eccentricity okay and for planetary motion this value of eccentricity decide what is the nature of that orbit for example if we take value of eccentricity as greater than 1 equal to 1 okay less than uh, greater than 0 but less than 1 and eccentricity as 0 now for value to get e which is greater than 1 this energy must be positive if value of energy is positive then this term is greater than 1 and we have eccentricity as greater than 1 and we know that if e is greater than 1 from equation of conic sections this is nothing but equation for hyperbola so we get hyperbolic shape of the orbit now if e is equal to 1 which means this e must be 0 if you put e is equal to 0 in this equation you will get e equal to 1 so this is equation for parabola we know that for parabola eccentricity is equal to 1 now for this case as we discussed earlier energy must be greater than v prime minimum and less than 0 so if you take energy as negative term so 1 minus negative term we get value which is less than 1 okay so that's why this eccentricity becomes less than 1 and to get positive value energy must be greater than v prime minimum so for this we get orbit as ellipse okay and to get e is equal to 0 energy must be v prime minimum okay and here we get circle so we already studied different shape of orbit in general features of motion so for planetary motion this is the case for planet which is moving around sun energy is negative but greater than v prime minimum which is minimum effective potential energy that's why eccentricity is greater than 0 but less than 1 and we have elliptical orbit so in another word we can say for planetary motion every planet moves around sun in elliptical orbit okay and uh, sun is situated at one of the foci of the ellipse so in this way we derived kepler's first law of planetary motion uh, in next lecture we will see derivation of kepler's second law and third law